So this misconception is about um, uh, people uh, assuming that uh, intuitiveness leads to universal adoption and actually just by the intuitive nature of the technology, people will just get it. Um, and the business impact to that, if, if, if that doesn't uh, come to fruition, is ultimately that adoption doesn't happen and ultimately then there is no budget to resolve that specific issue and the organization doesn't achieve uh, the outcome it wants. Um, so the one thing that I would, I would encourage people to take from today's session is that adoption is inherently linked to value. If you have high adoption uh, of, of your technology, you maximize the value that you get back. Similarly, if you have low, uh, so on. So Simon, based on your uh, experience, what's your perception uh, about this specific misconception? Yeah, we, this was really in, right at the heart of some of our conversations when we were talking about the business case, right at the very start of Workday. Um, inevitably, um, trying to get the, the case through senior stakeholders and secure the funding is a very challenging thing to have to do. And every organisation that's here this afternoon with us will have experienced that in some way or another. And it's easy to say, yeah, don't have any budget for change, don't have any budget for adoption. It, it, the system's intuitive, you'll be able to use it and therefore take that uh, X number of pounds out of your business case. Um, I'm pleased to say we didn't do that. And I'm pleased to say that whilst we're going through all of this, we experienced, and um, as part of our fact finding, the diverse set of users that we have in our organization. We're a manufacturing organization that's been around for 150 years. And we have people who've been with the organization um, a long time, but we also have new entrants who um, will want to use the system in a particular way and aren't used to the Rolls-Royce ways of, of working. And we, we recognize that we had to put in adoption techniques and, and ways of using the system that were helpful for all of those people. They have a diverse set of needs when using the system. People who don't want to use technology to do this sort of thing, they didn't want to go in and, and um, have to look at it and see if their details were correct. They didn't want to have to go and put their overtime in the system. Um, but we have sort of taken that route and we've now got a lot of people using the, the system um, a lot of the time. But we have to be able to take people to where it is that they want to go. And we had to invest in understanding what it is that they wanted to do. We, the same routine isn't the same for every single person. So we had to understand what those needs are. We had to do some time management studies to see what it is that people were currently doing and where they would need help. And we kept that budget in the system um, and we actually made sure we, del we delivered what we wanted to deliver at the time on, in, during 2015 to make sure we adopted Workday correctly. In hindsight, our, uh, our mistake at the end of that period was to stand down that change team after three months after going live. We didn't really fully understand um, the true nature of adoption as we were uh, implementing our first truly SaaS system um, as we went live. And we'll come to this more and more as we, we talk on other things this afternoon as to the benefit of having that team fully in place, fully in link to, link to the team delivering the functionality and the technology. Um, and making sure that you maintain um, that ROI that Andy's talked about and the real way that you can get the benefit of using a system like this.